A very warm welcome to you this evening as you join us for this service of thanksgiving and remembrance for All Souls Tide. Normally we would invite you to join us here at St Mark's Church for this service, but unfortunately due to current restrictions we are unable to do that. And so I thank you for sending in the names that you of your loved ones that we remember tonight. Those whom we love but see no longer. We pray also for you as you continue to grieve their loss. The service has been put together by a small team. I'd like to thank Frank, our curate, for his leading of the service. Hopefully this time next year we will be able to get together again and remember in person, in community, those whom we love but sadly we see no longer. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. And our opening prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. 
As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Now we come to our time of confession and seeking God's forgiveness. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. When the time had fully come, you sent the Son of Righteousness. In him the fullness of your glory dwells. To you be glory and praise forever. And the Collect for All Souls. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Maker and Redeemer, grant us with all the faithful departed the sure benefits of your Son's saving passion and glorious resurrection that in the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Book of Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is, so I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind and therefore I have hope the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. 
For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomsoever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. Anyone who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Here ends the second reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading from the Book of Lamentations in the Old Testament is a book that contains the grief and grieving of the Jewish nation as it finds itself in exile and Jerusalem, its heart destroyed. It is about a community expressing how it feels, trying to make sense of what has happened, giving voice to the difficulties of being without that which is dear. For them, it is home and nationhood. For you and for me, it is about our personal loss of those we love, be it recently or years ago. The voice of the writer of Lamentations, I will try again. That's gone. That's quarter past, isn't it? Half past. Okay, got fifth. I'll be finished by the time we get to the next one. (laughs) 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading from the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament is a book that contains the grief and grieving of the Jewish nation as it finds itself in exile and Jerusalem its heart destroyed. It is about a community expressing how it feels, trying to make sense of what has happened, giving voice to the difficulties of being without that which is dear. For them, it is home and nationhood. For you and me, it is about our personal loss of those we love, be it recently or years ago. The voice of the writer of Lamentations gives voice to something of perhaps how we feel when he said, My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. Those may be phrases that seem familiar to you. We feel bereft. We are not at peace within ourselves. Happiness is somehow not the same. There will be for some that not within, which I've experienced as fear, but that not for others is the empty ache of the soul bowed down. The voice of Lamentations is the voice of humanity. It is the voice of everyone who has lost someone or something that is very precious and very dear to them. I sometimes describe this feeling of loss as a hole that is left within, a hole the shape of the one we have lost. I don't believe that it is a hole that can be filled or will disappear. Because the person we grieve for is unique and irreplaceable. Therefore, how can that void be filled? It has to be lived with. And through time, we do learn to live with it, and the burden becomes easier. But we don't forget, and we don't go back to where we were. We find within our lives what we refer to as a new normal. For me, and I hope you, there is a means of finding our new normal. I believe it is found in the constant love of God for us. At times of great hurt, that love can seem very distant, but it is there. Even the Jewish nation in exile knew that much when they said, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. In times of loss and grief that can seem such a distant statement, it can seem untrue and for some irrelevant. How can God's love be seen to never cease in the light of death? I have taken funerals of young men, and they were young men. And God's love seems so distant, and at times to have disappeared as those families lamented a son, a brother, a husband, or a father. It is the time, perhaps, that we shake our fist at God, because there seems nothing else to do. The final couple of verses from that reading are difficult if read out of context. The context is a nation that understands its exile as being in response to its faithlessness of God. That their inability to uphold the law of God means that God is punishing them. But that is not the case for us in our personal loss. God is not punishing us. So the hope that is laid before us is that God is a God of compassion with an abundance of steadfast love. And that compassion and abundance is writ large for us in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For us as Christians, death is not the end. There is a promise 
which is borne out in our second reading, which said, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For me, that gives a way forward, an understanding. Christ, the Son of God, has been given everything, given all, and his love enfolds all, uplifts all, is generous to all, and that generosity will be extended up until the last day. God's last day, not ours. That generosity of love goes beyond our time. It gives us the reassurance that we should remember those whom we love but see no longer. It should give us the confidence to give thanks for lives lived and memories shared. It should give us the joy to speak their name, not in the hushed tone of uncertainty, but in the everyday voice of certainty that they are remembered. And so on this feast of all souls, we bring before God all those who we remember. We will pray for them by name, because names are important to us and to God. If we remember in the Easter narrative, Mary came to the empty tomb and she recognised the risen Jesus because he spoke her name, Mary. We will light candles. And we do so remembering that Jesus is the light of the world. And our Easter candle is lit as a reminder of that fact. We light candles for a variety of reasons, but for me they are an extension of my prayer. I light a candle to remember someone or something in prayer. And when my Amen comes, the candle remains alight for a longer time, representing that my prayer continues within its light and beyond. It might be for you that the light of the candle lights up some glorious memories that you remember, or that the light of the candle will mirror the light of such a memory, and therefore your new normal may not seem such a dark place. This year, we will light the candles for you. And as we do so, we will pray for those we love but see no longer. We will also pray for all who grieve the loss of loved ones at this time. And I ask you to pray for yourselves and close family as you continue in your journey sure of God's love, found within Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. And so as we come to our time of prayer, we remember firstly those whom we love but see no longer. Lord of all, we praise you for all who have entered into their rest and reached the promised land where you are seen face to face. Give us grace to follow in their footsteps as they followed in the way of your Son. Thank you for the memory of those you have called to yourself. By each memory turn our hearts from things seen to things unseen, and lead us till we come to the eternal rest you have prepared for your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for ourselves as we grieve the loss of loved ones. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, that casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we remember by name Val Keeling, 
and we pray for all her nephews and nieces scattered around the country and Peter, her partner. We remember Edna, Jessie Court and those who grieve her loss for Lynn Dupree and Roger Dupree, daughter and son-in-law. We pray for the soul of John Edgar Greening. And we pray for Leslie, daughter and Jeff, for Kelly and for Amy, all part of the wider family. We also remember Frank George Clifton and Cynthia Enid Clifton and remember those who grieve their loss, Janice White, Roger Clifton, Trevor and Stephen Clifton and their families. We pray for the souls of Anne Bergen and for Eric Parker. We remember those who grieve their loss for Louise Parker, and a husband, Ray. And so we remember Barbara Dawes, and we pray for Sue and Barry Bolton, who grieve her loss, and their children, Sarah and Kieran. And also for David Dawes, Barbara's son, for Julie, Claire, Stephanie, Reese, Bradley, Emily and Ruby. For Thomas, Ernest Starmer. And we pray for those who grieve his loss, for Susan Eyre and family, for Anne Starmer and Mark, for Judith and her family, and for Denise and her family. Lord, we remember the soul of Josephine Elizabeth Mabbott and Jean Lillian Walker. And we pray for Joseph's family and for Jean's family. We remember the soul of Keith Williams. And we pray for Jackie, his wife, and for their two children, Carl and Sophie Beth. We remember Ivor Wetton. And we pray for his family. For Kay, Ian, Alison, Matthew, Gemma, Daniel, James, Nima and Kieran. We commend to you, Lord, the souls of David and Nancy Satchel, husband and wife who died a month apart. We pray for their family for Andrea and Matthew, Brian and Tammy, Sarah and Anne, for Bo, Lucy, Callum, we pray for Jenny and Bunny and their families, and Trixie and Gordon and their family. Lord, we also pray and hold before you Gwendolyn Winifred Taylor. And we pray for Joan and Rob and all the rest of the Wharf House neighbours where she lived. For Janet, Derek, Sue, Mark, Steve and Joy. For Mika and Tanya, for Jerry and Helen, for Craig and Sarah. We 
we pray for Alexander Rankin, known as Alec. And we hold before you those who grieve his loss for Thelma, for Diane, for Stuart, Moray, Adam and Daniel. We bring before you Muriel Price, John MacDonald and Denny Parker. And also we remember Ruth of Bretby Lane. We pray for Tony Price and Joe Price who grieve the loss for Emily Price and Anne Marie Parker, also grieving at this time. Lord, we remember Muriel Archer. And we pray for Jill, her daughter, and David, her son. We also remember other members of the family that grieve her loss for Albert, for Sally, for Terry, for Liz, for Katie, and the grandsons, Philip, Jamie, and Jack. We also hold before you Christopher Worth, known to everyone as Harry. We pray for Sharon, his wife, and for the children, Samantha, Gary, Dale, and Carrie Ann. Lord, we pray for Frank Shakespeare. And we pray for Glenis and for the wider family who continue to grieve his loss. We pray for the soul of Janet Bates. We pray for her husband, Chris, and their family at this time as they prepare for her funeral. We remember Gillian Ashton. And we remember her children, Hugh and Christine, and Christine's family. We're asked to remember tonight, Beryl, the sister of Pam Warrelow. And so we pray for Pam, for Karen and Andrew and family, for Kirsty, David and family. Lord, we remember Ruby Topless. And remember her family that grieve her loss, and in particular we remember Philip, her son. We pray also for Sheila Osborne, as we prepare for her funeral in this coming week. And we remember her family, for her sister, sister Kathleen and her husband Richard, for her daughter Jacqueline, her husband Mark, and for her grandchildren, Tobias and Felix. I ask your prayers and we remember before you, Lord, for my mum, Mary, Mary Bosher. We pray for her husband, Ted. For her children, Peter, Philip and Elizabeth and their families.
We remember also James Easton, who died in 1975, aged six months. We pray for James's mum and dad, Roger and Jennifer. We remember also the wider family We've also been asked to pray for David Talbot and Phil Tuplin, who have recently died, and our friends of the Easterns. We pray also for Ursula Mary McInnes, and we pray for her family for her son Colin, daughters Helen and Claire, her sister Joy and all the family who continue to grieve. We remember also and hold before you, Lord, the memory of Sarah Louise Hoyles, We pray for her dad, Stephen, and we remember also to Anetsu, Bradley, Helen, Leanne, Sue, Bex, Dave, Brad, Jean, remember Leah, Howard, Mary and Norman, who grieve Sarah's loss. Sarah was only 20. We remember also Brian Alsop. Remember the family for Carol, Julie, Karen, Lewis, Evie, Ruby, Sean, Dylan and Seth. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all that we remember this night, those we have named, those who are unnamed. We remember also those who have died in these tragic times of COVID. A disease that is indiscriminatory. And those who grieve the loss of loved ones who have been tragically taken sooner than expected. Lord, we bring all those upon our hearts. We bring them before you at this time. And we pray for ourselves. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
and our final prayers. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. The darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Let your light scatter the darkness and fill your church with your glory. Amen. <laughs>